Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial series. This is David Ward and in this tutorial series I'm planning to build a house. We're going to build a house from a blue or not a blueprint excuse me but a floor plan. So um, we'll build it from the the ground up uh, literally and you know and then you know put all the siding and, and carpet and you know walls interiors and everything that we need inside of it. So. Uh, without further ado, I am using Blender 2.76b. Um, not sure if you're watching this, what version you, you are using, but for the most part, all the tools should be the same. I'm not using any of the, the new special crazy add-on tools, um, uh, just the basic package of Blender. So shouldn't matter what version you're in. So in any case, let's get one of those floor plans so we can work with it. And one that I found is here on the archive excuse me, not the archive, but just archive.org. And it's basically, a, this website is full of, of old books and videos that are in the public domain. So the beauty of this beautiful designs book is that all of these floor plans are in the public domain. There's no copyright infringement or anything that you have to worry about. So uh, without further ado, let's take a peek at the interior of this book. Let's make this full screen here. Just kind of grab the pages here. Uh, it starts off, it's a grand and glorious feeling, it's feeling, it's a grand and glorious feeling to build a new home of your very own. And that also applies here in Blender. We're going to be building our own home, as it were, in the digital realm. So, let's pick out one of these floor plans. Let's just take a peek. I kind of have an idea in mind of the one I want to use, and it's on the very last page but we can take a look through and see what all they have. You can use a different one if you like. Obviously, you can do whatever you want to. But uh, let's take a peek. We got the Ryder, the Walton. Let's flip the page. These are all very basic styled houses, just very squared off um, with, you know, just triangular roof lines. Uh, not a lot of fancy stuff on them. Some of them have a little bit different doorways, and then they have shutters and things like that. But overall, they're very simple designs. So I thought this would be a good starting point. If you've not done any architectural visualization this might be a good starting point for you so we'll just flip through here and like I said I think the one that I want to do is here on this very last page it's kind of very very simple design but it also has a little bit fancier front door area so that'll give us some room to to bring that off the roof line out and you know put a porch under here or you know maybe some fancier steps or something like that with posts or something you know whatever you want to do to upgrade after we build the base house so um, if we look in here a little closer zoom in a bit and then kinda of just oops grab the wrong thing here Let me come back there we go alright there we go they got the Gibson and the Gilmore now this photograph that we see I believe is of the of the Gibson because you can see if I can grab it uh, it's got the two windows there on the side Whereas the Gilmore has two windows and also uh, the what would be the back door, I guess the side door. So the photograph only shows the two windows. So I believe it is this one. We're going to do this bigger one, or at least I am. It's a little bit bigger. As you can see, uh, it's got a Cape Cod character prominent in the Gibson. Clever space economy explains the small unit cost for which these four rooms may be built. Now it's four rooms, not four bedrooms, so there's only actually two bedrooms. So you get a living room, two bedrooms, and a kitchen. Now the Gilmore has the same exterior as the Gibson, but a different room arrangement with dimensions two feet greater each way. So whereas the Gibson is only 28 feet wide and 24 feet deep, the Gilmore is 30 feet wide and 26 feet deep. And also it has a dinette, so that's the, the extra space, the extra footage. It's only a few extra square feet, but uh, it, you know, it, the rearrangement enables the, the dinette. So that's the one I want to make. I want to have a little kitchen area, and then maybe a bedroom, and maybe a little office area. If I was to live in this house, that's exactly how I would have it. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's work on this one. Now, if we were just to, if we were just to, to right click on here and, and open the image in a new tab and then go look at that image. Uh, I mean, it's, you can read it and it's small, you can see the picture, but it's really hard to work from a floor plan this small. So what I want to do is come back over here and we're going to zoom in even further, really close, and now I'm going to go open image a new tab and we'll go to that new image. And it still looks small on screen, but you can see if we zoom in, 
it's quite a bit bigger. So it's still not quite as big as I would like it. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's zoom in a little bit more even. I guess that's as far as it'll go. Oops, I done, I done shut the book again. All right, so now let's right click and open image a new tab. Hopefully it's the, oops, <laughs> I went too many pages. Let's zoom out so we can see what we're doing. Oopsie, there we go. This thing is not very easy to use. Uh, the Gibson, that's what we want. So zoom in and open image a new tab. There we go. And it's very small, but I guess we'll have to make it work. So I'm gonna go save image as. And uh, let's name it Gibson underscore. Actually, that's not the Gibson. We don't want the Gibson, do we? We want the, let's escape out here. Ah, yeah, we do. Uh, we want the Gilmore, not the Gibson. So we'll save image as Gilmore underscore floor. Let me move this on screen here. Floor plan. There we go. Save. Okay, so now I saved it. Uh, and let's try that again so you can see where I'm putting it. Doesn't really matter. Oops. Save image. Ah, save image as. There we go. Top. I'm used to Firefox. Chrome is a little bit different. But, uh, I just made a little folder here in my, my default Blender files folder. So, piece of cake. Go more floor plan. So, we'll go ahead and cancel that out. Minimize this. Back into Blender. Let me sh make sure my screencast keys are turned on. Uh, let's see. File user preferences. Now, I, I had to install these because they don't come default in Blender anymore. But uh, um, if you don't need to use them, don't worry about it. But uh, otherwise, if you want to record your screen and tell people what screens, what buttons you're pushing, uh, you just got to turn that on there after you've installed it. Um, so I'm going to save that so it's on all the time. And we'll come down here, and it's now a new option here in my properties panel. So I'm going to start display. And now you can see a little mouse over here. So I see the scroll wheel, left mouse button, right mouse button. And it'll light them up. And you can also see whatever keys I'm pushing. So awesome. You can tell what I'm doing. So I don't have to actually verbally explain the buttons I'm pushing. But I'll still try to do some of that. OK, now let's get to work. Uh, what I first want to do is turn on background images. And then I'm going to add an image. And I'm going to open it. And it's going to be in my G drive under Blender Files. And it's going to be Bungalow 4. Boom, right there. Gilmore Floor Plan. So we'll open that up. And you can't see anything right now because we are in Perspective View. But if we go to any of the flat shaded views, right now I'm in the Front View. I just hit the one button to go to Front View and then five to turn it from Perspective to Orthographic. So now we're in Front View. Now we don't want to be in Front View with this image visible, so I'm going to set the axis to only be from the top. So now we can only see that background image if we hit the 7 button and are looking at it from the top. Okay, now another thing that I like to do um, is to turn the world unit measurements on. So you go to, uh, let's see, yeah, the, the scene settings right there turn the units, you can leave them as is if you want. I'm going to set it to Imperial, and that's uh, Imperial is inches and feet and yards. Metric, obviously, is centimeters, meters, decimeters, millimeters, uh, kilometers, so on and so forth. But I'm going to use inches and feet because that is what this floor plan is based on. You can see. If I zoom in a little further, you can see 12 feet by 9.5 feet, so it's 12 feet wide by 9.5, nine, 9 feet 6 inches, so it's 9 feet 6 inches, 9.5 and feet. Um, and the outside shows 30 feet, so each the thickness of a wall is 6 inches, so if we measure this out just right, we got 16.5 feet across the living room. So we add in the six inches here, the half a foot there, that makes it 17, plus this half feet, half foot is 17 and a half, plus this 12 feet makes it 29 and a half, plus this final half foot, six inches, makes it an even, what, 30 feet. There we go. So now what we need to do is make this floor plan span the actual dimensions of 30 feet. So we come down here in the settings for image, and right now the size is fairly large, but I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger because each one of these square grids, square units, let's make it a little more transparent so I can see through it a little easier. There we go. Don't know why I'm whispering, but uh, anyways. 
Okay, so let's make it a bit bigger. Tell you what let's do first. Let's make our square the 30 feet wide by how how deep? 30 feet by, what was it, 26, I believe? Let's move that out of the way. Yes, 30 by 26. So let's make our square. First off, easiest way to do this is we tab into edit mode, hit the S button to scale, and then say 0.5. It'll scale it down to one by one. Zoom out here, you can see it, because the default Blender Cube is two Blender units by two Blender units, which is not accurate now because you can see it's off a little bit, even though we only scaled it by half. And that is because Blender units are slightly bigger than Imperial units. They're based, the Blender units are based on the metric units. So since we're going to Imperial, what I can do is just delete that default cube and then add in a new one I added it in down there. Clear out its size. Okay, so that makes it two feet by two feet. So that makes it perfectly fine. Let's put our 3D cursor back in the center. Cursor to center, there we go. Okay, so now we have our default cube. One blender unit by one blender unit. If you zoom in really far, you can see it divides up even further into 12 inches. So, love that metric. I mean, I love that imperial. I honestly wished... Uh, that uh, the United States was metric because it's all based on tens and it's very easy to divide and multiply. But Imperial, it's 12 inches and one foot, three feet and one yard, so on and so forth. It's just, it gets very confusing. It'd be so much easier if things were all metric, but here we are. Anyways, so to get this 30 feet by 26 feet, sorry, I digressed. Uh, we can tab in, scale it 0.5. So that makes it one foot by one foot. And then we can scale it again S X to scale on the X axis 30 times, so that makes it 30 feet. Then S Y on the Y axis 26. So now we have 26 by 30 feet. So if I tab out of edit mode, reposition this there on the red line. If we zoom in here, we can count. These are three feet segments, so ah, stay on top. So we got a three foot cube there, so one yard, two yards, three yards, so three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and that's halfway. So there would be another five times three in here, so fifteen by fifteen. So that's thirty feet wide, and three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, and just short of twenty-seven, we have twenty-six. So there we go. Nice easy way to get our dimensions. Okay, so now let's turn that floor plan back on and get that scaled up accordingly. Hit the Z button to go into wireframe so I can see through my little cube there. And now I can scale this way up and move it on the X and Y axis until the outer edges of that floor plan match up with our cube. Might have to even rotate it a little bit because it's a scan of a page from a book. So it's not going to be perfectly straight. So that looks about right on the width. Let's bring it up here to about there and rotate it ever so slightly. About maybe right there. Then we'll just bring it back over. Let's zoom in a little bit. Make our screen a little bigger. I'm going to get control up to maximize that in the viewport here. And we can move it a little bit on the x-axis. If we hold down shift, it's a little bit more precise. It gives you less squareliness as I like to call it. Looks like we need to scale it up just a little bit bigger. We're just inside that. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Just hold down shift again. It'll be the same thing. You can make it a lot more precise. So then we can move it back and then move it there. So we should be pretty close. Needs to rotate a little less. So maybe about like that. Maybe a little bit more. About right there. 0. 0.6. Well, that's not very much at all. 0. 0.6. So then we'll bump that back over. And looks good. Bump that up. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so now we have our correct dimensions, our correct size. And I think that's going to be all for part one. Um, I don't want to make these too long. Um, is I know uh, tutorials today tend to drag on, and the or they used to, and now the the uh, 
the trend is to do nice, quick, short ones. So this first one is just getting your floor plan and getting the the dimensions set up, ready to start putting up your walls. So in part two, we'll put up our walls. So thanks for watching. That's going to be all for part one. We'll see you in part two.